Hey y'all, welcome to the Frame of Flower podcast. This is episode number 22. I'm joined by a very special guest. His name is Elon Sabel. He is the CEO of BioHarvest Sciences, a company that is definitely, um, you know, trailblazing uh, the way ahead in terms of, you know, sustainability and bio- biotech. Anyway, thanks for joining me, Elon. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Luke. Yeah, absolutely. So before we get into bio, bio harvest sciences, I just wanted to kind of, you know, where are you from? Kind of what's your corporate background where, you know, I know you had some, you know, you were involved with Coca-Cola and some tech companies and Bud White, like, you know, all, all different types of companies. Right. So very interesting. So, uh, yeah, um, I was, uh, as you may hear from my accent and your viewers can try and figure it out. Yeah. I was uh, I was born in South Africa. I grew up in South Africa up until the age of 12. Then I moved to Australia, became an Aussie. Uh, so my accent moves in oh, between that's South why. Africa and Australia. Yeah. It okay. explains a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and I did most of my, uh, my formidable schooling in Australia. I went to university in Australia. Um, I actually spent some time in the U.S. also at school in Boston. Um, and I actually, I started my career on a truck, uh, frankly, on a, on a two liter, uh, on, a, on a Pepsi truck, literally schlepping, as we say, two liter Pepsi uh, in downtown Boston uh, as an intern. And I worked my way up uh, through the uh, organization from uh, a schlepper, uh, learned a lot, uh, became a merchandiser, became a sales guy. Um, at uh, pretty quickly, I was managing all sales development in the Boston city area. And uh, I was ready to start a long career with, with uh, Pepsi and stay in the US. My parents called me at the time back to Australia, said, you need to come back. I said, fine, I'm coming back for a little while to finish off my studies. Um, and I said, wherever the best job in the world is, I'm going, you know, my, uh, my future is in my hands. And I landed up uh, getting a job with the Coca-Cola company in Australia. Um, And that was the start of an amazing 18 year international career where I spent 12 years in Asia in many different roles. Um, The key roles I did there was I was general manager of the business in Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau. I started the business from scratch, helping to build a plant, bottling plant in Mongolia, which was one of the the countries in the world where they they were not producing uh, Coca-Cola locally. Um, I then moved to Shanghai where I was running all of marketing innovation for the China business, spent four years living there, moved to South Africa, where I ran all of marketing and the commercial side of the business, did all the work on the, on the World Cup. I did all the work on the marketing work on the Beijing Olympics as well. Then I moved to the US, spent uh, four years in New York, where I was general manager of a company called Glasso, which is managing brands like Vitamin Water, Smart Water, and Powerade in, in the US market. Um, and then I hit the age of 40, had that, uh, you know, I call it a positive midlife crisis. Um, I was a little bit tired of corporate America. Uh, I always had the strong entrepreneurial spirit inside me. Um, and uh, my wife told me one more country, pick one more country. Um, and uh, Israel was always close to my heart um, growing up. And we decided to move the family to Israel in 2014. And I was very lucky. I, I joined two partners here and, and I was the employee number five. Um, I joined a company called Weisberger as COO of the business. It was a big data IoT and software company. Uh, we built unique technology that went into bars and restaurants. We put sensors on the beer taps. We connected to the actual point of sale systems, took all the data to the cloud. And inside the cloud, we worked our magic we built all the capabilities to clean the data, to be able to uh, translate the data into insights for the bar owners or restaurant owners. And then we sold the data to the brewery. We we're working with all the major breweries across the world. And in fact, I spent a lot of time in Canada where I worked, we worked very closely with Labatt. And we were very fortunate that uh, Anhauser Bush Inbev landed up buying our business in uh, 2018. Um, and I continued to work closely with uh, Anhauser Bush as part of the integration a great company to work with. Uh, and then I came across as an investor, this company called BioHarvest uh, Sciences. Uh, and as an investor, I, I fell in love with the company. Uh, I fell in love with the technology and the ability of the technology to change the world. 
um, and to create just enormous, uh, what I call human utility value uh, as a result of the ability of the technology to be able to take any secondary metabolite, any active ingredient from a plant and to be able to grow it um, in, uh, in a cells in bioreactors and actually to be able to concentrate those active ingredients. Um, and I did a lot of the, the due diligence and I landed up investing in the company together with a, a number of other friends. And uh, that was in December last year. And then in early, early this year, the, uh, the time the CEO and the, president and the chairman of the company came to me and said, look, you know, we'd like you to join us as a, as a professional CEO. And I, I jumped at the opportunity because it was an opportunity really to make a difference to the world. And here I am, you know, five months later, it's probably been as much of the amazing experience I've had in my career in the last, you know, 25 years. I think the last five months, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, you know, dealing, the people are just, um, are, are unwavering in their commitment to science and in the commitment to, to commercializing the science to really make a difference. Um, and I'm leveraging all my skills and, and what I've learned in 25 years to, to really bring something unique to market. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, potentially some of those contacts too. I mean, some of the applications, but you kind of went over to with, um, you know, what exactly the, the technology is, but let's just for the audience, like clearly, what exactly is so amazing about bioharvest sciences? Uh, what is the exact technology? So we have spent, uh, literally 10 years perfecting this technology and, and uh, about $35 million to develop what we call our biofarming technology. What is biofarming? Biofarming is a platform technology where we have the unique patented capabilities to be able to take any active ingredient or secondary metabolite from any plant or any fruit and be able to take that active ingredient and to be able to grow that active ingredient in a cell. And we are also able to concentrate the levels of that active ingredient. In the case of Vinia, which is our red grape cell product, we concentrate the Pisces resveratrol found in the skin of the red grape by 100 times. And we grow it in a literally a, the cleanest environment possible with fingerprint consistency and leveraging a cell bank. We never have to go back to the plant. We're always just growing the cells. So we have that maximum consistency, which is so important in the industry, specifically when, you, when you're dealing with critical, um, critical antioxidants, polyphenols, cannabinoids, you have to have that consistency, fingerprint consistency. You have to have that cleanliness. And we grow these cells in liquid media. What does that mean? We grow these cells in bioreactors over, over normally a three week process. And then we harvest the cells, we dry the cells. And literally in the case of, uh, in the case of Vinia, I brought a, a bottle yeah, of Vinia here. Yeah, I'd love to see what this looks like, yeah, absolutely. So, so Vinia is actually, Luke, our proof of concept. And this is based on the French um, paradox. You know, the French people, uh, traditionally, they have a very fatty diet, lots of pate, lipids, uh, meat, um, but they have a very good cardiovascular health. And what drives that is the moderate consumption of, uh, of red wine. And when you look, in, what is it inside the red wine? It's actually the Pisces resveratrol, which is resveratrol in its natural structure, combined with the other polyphenols, Antithenines, tannins, coercitin, and catagen, all coming together synergistically. Um, and as a result of moderate consumption of three to four glasses of red wine, you're able to improve the cardiovascular health. So we went back to the red grape. We took the resveratrol. We were able to also take all the polyphenols and we, we concentrated the resveratrol 100 times. We able to include the synergistic effect of all the other polyphenols. And we are, we are left after 21 days with this amazing rich powder, rich in resveratrol, Pisces resveratrol and antioxidants and polyphenols. And in one little capsule like this, I'll hold it closely to the yeah, camera. Perfect. Okay. That's good. Literally you have as much Pisces resveratrol 
as contained in one entire bottle of red wine. But as a result of our bar farming process, we're able to ensure there's no calories, there's no sugar, and there's 0% alcohol. Wow. So this is a, 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 a proof of concept that we have. We've also been able to validate this proof of concept with uh, uh, some products that are part of our pipeline, which includes an olive-based products with all the rich polyphenols of an olive without any of the calories. You can imagine olive oil, people say it's very good for you, but you know it's, there's a lot of calories in olive oil. So we've been able to, again, concentrate the critical polyphenols that are inside uh, the olive and are able to produce a um, similar kind of product with no calories, with no sugar. Absolutely. Um, and all the benefits from a lowering cholesterol perspective and also in the area of pomegranate. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So, so for the audience, I, I'm sure you know, a lot of you guys get this, but like, for example, like with that one pill, how like, right, you skip the growing, the, the growing, the plant process, right? So how much like, for example, would like a box of those pills take up in equivalent to red, what red grape trees, right? Or so, roughly? So, it's a, it's a, so it's a great, it's a great question. Yeah. From a sustainability perspective, environmental sustainability perspective, the technology is just gold star. Um, to give you some perspective, one of our bioreactors is, let's say it's the size of me standing up. I'm, you know, six foot two kind of guy. You take one big bioreactor is equivalent to literally one, uh, literally 10,000 square meters of land. Wow. From a production perspective. So you can imagine we have the, the cleanliness, we have the consistency, you have the cost advantages which are so important in this industry normally cost advantage doesn't go with your know, uniqueness in the in the overall product proposition premiumness in the product proposition so for us it's different we've been able to deliver a unique cost advantage we have a huge environmental sustainability focus plus the consistency fingerprint consistency the cleanliness um, and then the ability to concentrate those active ingredients. And by what's also important is by, as a result of the process, those active ingredients are all in their natural structure. This is very important. Why is it important? It's very important because today in the dietary supplement world, there are many products selling out there, but 99% of them are not in their natural structure. And if a product's not in its natural structure, it doesn't have bioavailability. Bioavailability is the ability of the body to absorb that critical active ingredient. So what's unique with our Vinia product is that we have Parsi resveratrol in a natural structure and the product has very high bioavailability. It's very easily absorbed into the blood plasma and as a result of that, we have such good efficacy of the product. The ability of the product, you know, from all of our clinical trials that we've done, we're also, in addition to all the work we're doing on the R&D side with the biofarming platform, we're also a science-based company. So everything that we're doing, we're validating with science. And we have spent a lot of money uh, doing a number of clinical trials, double-blind placebo, or reviewed in, um, in specific peer-reviewed scientific journals mm -hmm. and published in these journals. And we've been able to demonstrate after consuming our vinea, 400 milligrams, equivalent of what I'm holding here, um, based on consecutively on the three months, our clinicals are all based on three months. We've been able to demonstrate the ability to increase the elasticity of your arteries by up, uh, on average 148% versus baseline. So what this means is we increase the blood flow in your body and therefore we increase the oxygen levels. Yeah. And distribution of nutrients, a, right? Every, I mean, a good blood flow is key to really long. Good blood flow is critical to, to all of your organs and uh, bringing oxygen to the body is important also for your energy levels. And then as a result of this mechanism of action, we're able to reduce the diastolic blood pressure significantly. We're also clinically proven being able to significantly reduce the oxidation of LDL cholesterol. When LDL cholesterol oxidizes, it causes plaque in your arteries, which is the start of, of heart disease. So we're able to reduce that oxidation. Wow. 
And we've also done a number of clinicals in the area uh, with, with patients who are, had mild type 2 diabetes. And we've been able to demonstrate the ability to reduce the hemoglobin type 1 AC level significantly and increase insulin sensitivity. Um, and, you know, we could go on and do more clinicals. You know, we you hear from our consumers in Israel right now, we've sold over the last couple of years, probably more than 30,000 bottles. And we get a lot of feedback from people saying my triglycerides are down, my glucose levels are down. We just haven't done clinicals to be able to go out and, and, and say it with the, the level of confidence that you need to be able to say it, putting it on packaging, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, the science that we have really validates the effectiveness of the biofarming platform in being able to produce these secondary metabolites at such a cost advantage um, and with such bioavailability. And as you know, we're now very eagerly working on the cannabis side. Um, as a company, we're, we're really proud to be the only, uh, actually the first company I should say, that we know about to have successfully grown cannabis cells um, containing cannabinoids in liquid media, in bioreactors, um, and uh, with a very um, similar structure uh, to your regular <coughs> cannabinoids, exact, I should say, structure yeah, to that's the regular exact, right. We just want to make that clarify too, right? So this is because there is a thing out there that's synthetic cannabis, and that's absolutely not what this is, right? No, not at all. So make that in clear. addition, we're also non-GMO. This is yes. very important as well. Yes, non -GMO. Um, The platform produces the secondary metabolites like polyphenols, like cannabinoids, <clears throat> in a non-GMO fashion. And we were able to demonstrate the six distinct cannabinoids um, and um, with, um, with a profile, exact profile produced by, you know, um, produced by uh, cannabis grown in suspension, which is identical to the profile of the sourced cannabis plant. Mm. And now the team's really working like crazy to commercialize this in the same way that we have commercialized Vinia and selling it in the market. Yeah, absolutely. So what would, uh, so just, I'm just curious about what would the, T, so the THC that you guys produce, right? The active ingredient would be THC, let's just say. Would that look like similar, like it could be in a pill, like it looks like a Reddit, like whatever, so like what would it look like? I'm just curious about just the actual look of it. Uh, so obviously, the, the, uh, <clears throat> because of our vineyard is from a red grape cell, yes, you, yes, you, yeah. you see calories. <laughs> so when you, when you think about it in the context of, of, of cannabis and you, and you look at what the, the final, the final you know, yeah. dried uh, product will be, obviously, it would be looking a lot more similar to the actual plant that it comes from, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you, you get yes. that unique uh, green-like um, color. Um, but yeah, whether it's THC, uh, whether we, you know, whether it's different types of, um, you know, CBD, um, you know, we're working out. And I think what's what's unique about what we can do is we're able to grow the cells in a way that we can we can make sure that we have the right full spectrum, right? And as you know, full spectrum is so important in order to get the the efficacy uh, with the end consumer. We're specifically in the context of medicinal. Mm -hmm. uh, cannabis, which is so, which uh, which is very obviously important for us as a target for us to be going after. Um, you know, when you look at, say, for example, uh, veterans that are um, you know suffering from uh, post traumatic stress disorder, they're actually I'm not sure if you're aware, they're actually the biggest consumers of uh, medical cannabis from an overall uh, quantity perspective. And for them, what's so critical is the consistency. So, you know, you speak to these people and it's like one week they're doing great. The next week they get a different source of cannabis. It's not fingerprint consistency. Yep. It's been impacted by the climatic conditions, uh, water conditions, light conditions. Uh, if it's coming from an indoor greenhouse, uh, you're never going to get there's that so many different growing variables, like you're saying. So that, and there's, right. there's thousands of them. So it could change. We take those variables growing. away. Yeah, we have no variables. Yeah. We're able to control those variables in our process, and that's why what we have is fingerprint consistency, which is so important in the application of cannabis for pharma, which is a big fo focus. Because at the end of the day, pharma is where we're going to get the greatest, you know, human utility value. You, yeah. you hear me use this word all the time: human utility value. 
And it's something I'm very passionate about because we need to make sure that our products are creating the greatest human utility value. That's, this is solving major problems that consumers have. And as you move up the curve, medical problems are, 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 have the greatest utility value because you're Absolutely. changing people's lives. Absolutely. So and, that and from a recreational great. standpoint too, I would say is I think the future of cannabis in a lot of ways is like every individual has a different reaction to different cannabinoids and stuff, right? So the future is there'll be customized blends made for this individual, right? But you can't do that unless you have stable cannabinoids that are consistent. And that's where, and this is the first kind of product I've ever heard of this, this, this consistency 100% of the time, right? Yeah, I mean, the whole notion of, you know, personal medicine, customizable medicine, this is where the world is going. Yes. Um, you know, how long it's going to take in the cannabis space, right, is, you know, something that, uh, you know, is yet to be seen. But definitely the starting point has to be the ability to be, you know, starting with a level of consistency of ingredients. If you can't have consistency of ingredients, there's no ways that you can customize. Yeah. So, uh, yes, this does allow, uh, you know, over time, you know, it gives you the, the, the basis to go into that space. Um, but, you know, specifically when you look at pharma companies, they need the consistency. They need the cleanliness. I mean, cleanliness today in cannabis is a major, major issue. If you look at the different micros that are growing, if you look at what's being utilized, unfortunately, the pressure on the industry today to because of the economic challenges to be able to um, optimize the productivity, the yield is so great that unfortunately you have the, 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 the farmers or the producers utilizing certain means to optimize the yield. And in many cases, there's an opportunity cost and the opportunity cost is around cleanliness. And you have to have that, that level of cleanliness. If you're gonna be putting cannabis into medicinal cannabis or going into pharma, and we know the pharma companies today, they're all working. If you look at the number of clinical trials that have been done in the last three years by major pharma companies, it's significant because all the pharma companies are looking for that next generation of drugs that are able to solve problems that today, the current, uh, the current drugs that are available have not been able to solve. Um, and so you see this huge spike in clinical trials and there's a lot of successes uh, that are starting to happen, but they need a, a supply of cannabis that's consistent and that's clean, clean right. and that can be concentrated. Yeah, and that's absolutely. that's that's the focus of us in our absolutely. technology. Yeah, lawsuit free for sure. That's going to be a big problem coming up in the future with because you're like you're saying at scale, it's hard. I mean, things are going to slip through the cracks unless you have a, a permanent system that can absolutely shut out any sort of microbes or anything that can get you into that. Um, okay. So in terms of, you know, how, so do you guys have like a degree of, so how much THC can, cause I, I remember seeing, um, a fact like you guys can generate the same amount that a 10,000 square foot grow would generate in THC. And you can do that in a 2000 square foot facility. Is that something or is that, was that the right number around there? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not it, sure what the, the, what, what the exact, the, yeah, yeah. So, but it's, but it's around there. So what are the inputs then, I guess, to what do you, what do you guys ideally see in the future of inputs, like for pro like specific cannabis products? Like I see like infused products, right? That's where this would make a lot of sense, right? Drinkables and, and edible. Is that? Yeah. So look, like, when you look at the advantages that the biofarming platform has in the area of, uh, producing uh, cannabis. It's, it's around, again, you know, the fingerprint consistency, the cleanliness, the, and the concentration and the cost advantage. So the application of this is all the way through to food and beverage companies. You know, as we start to see coming from a food and beverage company myself, um, you know, everything is standardized. No ingredient comes into a major multinational unless it's fingerprint consistency. And um, the ma um, these major companies, they check every batch of ingredients to make sure it, it's, its overall profile is exactly what was chosen by the product developers and by the scientists in order to produce product X. And if it's not, guess what happens? It gets rejected. You know, in my previous life, uh, we, we, I had situations where actual ingredients were continuously being rejected. Um, because it didn't have that consistency. And that's all about managing quality in the supply chain. 
So you so, have a lot of knowledge about with that specifically too. So that's, I mean, well, the food companies today, you know, you're not going to see the major food companies today. You'll see small, op you see small operators today doing the infused beverage here, you know, the different types of, you know, hemp based CBD products, you know, in the U S in Canada with THC, but the big players are only going to start playing once they have consistency in the supply chain. And once there is that, cleanliness there as well yeah. so there's the application you know in that area i call it in the food and beverage area and then as i've explained earlier the application in the medicinal area from a medicinal cannabis perspective when the doctor's prescribing cannabis to a patient who has um, post-traumatic stress disorder knowing that there's a source of cannabis that's consistent that can be look have that fingerprint consistency every single week and prescribing that particular type for a patient is important all the way through to also recreational cannabis. A lot of um, people, they, you know, they, they develop a certain affinity for a certain type of cannabis with a certain level of terpines. As you know, the terpines is able to give the overall sensory effect. Okay, so you need a technology that's able to say, okay, Luke, you, know, you like to use this type of cannabis on a recreational level. And you want to make sure that every time you use that, that particular cannabis that you're having the same sensory experience. So the application is food and beverage, recreational, medicinal, and then of course, pharma, they're not going to use anything else. Yeah. They need the kind of um, platform that we have to be able to produce um, the, 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 char the characteristics of the cannabis that I've explained in order for them to be able to actually scale their drugs into the market. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess, I guess I like, you know, you think you might be a unique in, like person to kind of speak to this, but I guess like, let's walk or like, let's say we're, let's say we're Coca-Cola, right? They're not going to come into the market without, right? That consistency you're talking about, everything you were talking about. And then they're not going to come into a market that's, that's fragmented, right? So let's talk about like the US, like they would never come into the cannabis drink market until it's a, a economy of scale, right? And they have the consistency Plus, not touching the plant is deregulation. Great. Obviously, deregulation, yeah. um, and then obviously the ability to have a supply chain that's going to uphold the the commitment to quality that these companies have, which is a very it's a religious commitment to quality, mm -hmm. um, and that's part of their culture. So that's why they need to have suppliers that can uphold that promise of quality to the consumer, and I think that's going to be important because. As consumers get more educated, even today on cannabis, if you look at cannabis chat channels, people are starting to realize, they start to understand that uh, the challenges around inconsistency, they start to understand the challenges around mold, pesticide, um, you know, all the, um, the, the, the different um, you know, materials that are utilized to be able to grow the yield. And there's a lot, lot higher awareness. You have municipalities in the US today that are crying because um, the farmers are growing cannabis and there's a terrible smell or there's the, the effluent that goes into the water system. Yeah. So I think, you know, the world's waking up um, to this across every industry. Cannabis is more sensitivity. So it probably has even more scrutiny. Uh, and, and you see articles every single day. You know, you look at any uh, major publication that's talking about cannabis, you'll see articles referring to the challenges um, around the cleanliness and what it's doing to the environment. Yeah. So you, you see articles around the consistency. The FDA today has now start, you know, really started to, to look in the US more so than ever to, to actually assess the levels of THC and CBD, right? Making sure that the THC is less than 0.3%. And they're finding, it's scary Mostly what it's they're not. finding. It's all, they're finding it's that in many cases. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, you, so basically, you know, it's all about making a promise to the consumer and delivering on the promise. And because of the nature of the actual cannabis flower and the whole end-to-end -end process, if you don't have the right technology that can control it all the way through like we can and can deliver that fingerprint consistency with the cleanliness that's required, it's very, very hard to, to trust. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and it just, I remember when someone was telling me first about biosciences and I looked into like uh, all the technology and it just, it almost reminded me of like uh, in the future of like, you know, in Star Trek where they have the thing that beams down, you know, whatever you want, right? Like, it's just like that, it's, it's obviously very different, but it has a similar kind of feeling almost to it, which is insane, right? So, I mean, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's ahead of its, you guys are ahead of. Uh, Look, it is, it is game changing. Yeah. 
it is game changing, which is frankly why I invested in the company, yeah. you know, nearly a year ago. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the technology platform has come to the world at a time that the world needs it more than ever. If you look at challenges from a scarcity perspective, if you look at challenges that, you know, that we're facing, look what we've gone through this year, um, you know, where more than ever consumers are looking at their health and wellness. And, you know, you can't just go to and, and just buy any dietary supplement or any multivitamin. You really have to understand what you're purchasing um, and making sure you're utilizing a platform that has that level of consistency, the level of cleanliness, the ability to concentrate, the ability to have the bioavailability. I can't emphasize how important bioavailability is um, because otherwise literally it goes in, you consume it and you literally, yeah. you know, that's, it that's leaves your body pretty quickly. Um, so that's what, and that's what it's all about, you know, ultimately delivering the efficacy that the consumer deserves because they, they, you know, purchasing this with their hard, hard earned, um, income and the ability to impact their lives in, in a positive way. And that's what we're grounded in. You know, the way our scientists, our scientists, I've never seen such hardworking, determined people, um, the way they come to work every single day, looking to, to take the technology to the next level to figure out how do we do a better job commercializing this. Um, it's inspiring. Uh, we're, we're, we have an amazing group of people that um, are part of the company from our you know, regulatory team, our quality team, our commercial team, um, the marketing team. How many employees team. do you guys have, by the way, just roughly? So we have, we have uh, now about 22 employees wow. and we're growing. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, so, we're manufacturing as well. And I, I'm sure your viewers probably have seen this, you know, we, we, uh, I spent all my, my time today in amazing meetings, um, around, you know, we announced about two months ago that we, um, we have a very major manufacturing partnership is that and the Vitari, we are currently, is that the Vitari, uh, no, the Vitari's distribution. I'll get onto that okay, in a we'll second. That, but yeah, the yeah, the yeah. key part. Yeah. Um, it was a company called Sugat um, here in Israel, amazing company, great capabilities. And, and they're going to be our strategic manufacturer um, of our nutraceutical ingredients. So basically our superfood nutraceuticals like Vinia. Um, and uh, we're going to have a 20 ton facility operational um, in early Q3 next year. Um, and it's, it's going to be st state of the art, robotic driven, uh, really, you know, inspiring because we, we, we want to make, have a facility that's, you know, of the highest uh, quality standards. Um, and, um, you know, these things, when you're kind of on the leading edge, we can't just be on the leading edge of our technology. We have to be on the leading edge also on how we're commercializing the technology. And then the other major agreement that you referred to was with um, Batori Foods. Um, and Batori Foods is a fantastic partner. Uh, I don't think we could ask for a, a better partner to validate the power of our technology in the US market. They are the leading food ingredients only distribution company in the US. And they are really a, a giant of the, of the distribution game. And they service all the giants of the food industry as their customers. So this gives us real access to sell Vinia B2B directly to major, you know, food and beverage companies and nutraceutical companies for them to utilize Vinia inside their existing products. Um, and then obviously in Q1 as well, we'll be launching Vinia B2C in the US as well, similar to how we, we sell it here in Israel. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess, so other than California, where, because you guys are going to have this, this is actually a question, uh, shout out to the working class. He's one of your investors actually, who told me all about you guys. And he sent me a couple of questions to ask, but he was asking other than California, where else do you see um, you guys, excel, you guys expanding factory locations to? Cause I, are you guys going to have one in California or? Well, look, I mean, we're, we're, we're busy now thinking through the footprint. Yeah. Um, and the footprint all has to match where the customer base is. Mm. Um, so, you know, right now we're, we're working hard on commercializing the technology in the, in the context of cannabis. And then, you know, depending on the final, the final, uh, I would say the final mix of our customer base, how much of it is pharma, how much of it will go to medicinal, how much will go to recreational, how much will go to food and beverage and where we will then manage the footprint of our manufacturing. What is great 
is because the technology is has such a low cost of capital. You can you, know, you, you think about and you know Canada is a classic example. Look at the investment of the many cannabis companies. You know, you know downstream. Yeah. You know, with um, you know, basically in-house greenhouses and the cost of everything that's required. And then you look at our te technology um, and what and you look at the cost structure of our technology, it, you, you just, you can't compare the two. Yeah, um, exactly. And um, as a result of the low cost of capital, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not difficult for me to what I call lift and shift, yeah. right? Literally Easy. or copy paste. It's a very easy copy paste, but we want to be obviously given the regulatory environment in the U S you have to be near your customers. Um, obviously Canada's, you know, a different ball game. Um, and you know, the world's going to be, you know, the world's opening up, you know, it's uh, the, the progressiveness around cannabis uh, is changing rapidly across Europe here in Israel. Um, you know, obviously U S is right down the last week. It's going to, you know, it's undergone a massive change. So the key thing is we need to be near our customers and we have a low cost of capital that allows us to be, be able to build a footprint that makes sense, which is, which is the beauty of the technology. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So just a couple more questions before we, before we wrap it up. Thank you, by the way, so much for your time. Um, no problem. So just cause I'm just super curious, you know, I've seen Israel lately cause you know, you've moved there now, you know, cannabis and just technology and biotechnology. It's just, it's, it's absolutely flourishing there. Why, why do you think that is like it, it, it's something I've started to kind of see a hub there really start to develop. Why is Israel a hub? Well, I think a couple of reasons. Um, I think firstly, you have um, on the medicinal side, you have a, a, a medical industry that's much more progressive, um, less conservative, more progressive. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, you got to understand that if you look at some of the, the fathers of cannabis who actually discovered the power of cannabis, they came from Israel. They were, you know, literally the, the, the legends, the cannabis legends, Many of them started here in Israel. So there's been, there's been like a, a history here, a legacy on the power of cannabis. And as I said, you have a much more progressive medical system, um, also social welfare in similar to Canada. And, um, and, and given that, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, I guess, a much greater focus on solving medical problems that haven't been solved before and thinking outside of the box. And that means in many cases using cannabis uh, to solve those problems. So I think that's the one reason. Uh, the second reason, unfortunately, is similar to, you know, I guess Canada to some extent, which has a, a high number of, um, of veterans. Uh, we also have a, a number of veterans here, unfortunately, just given the nature of where we live. And, um, you know, PTSD is, is a very common, a very, very common issue to deal with. Um, uh, so that's the second reason. And I think the third reason is just the, you know, Israel today is a major innovation hub, um, you know, from a science perspective. Um, and you're finding companies out there that are from a pharma and science biotech perspective that are trying to come up with the next drug that is able to, I was talking to somebody recently about a, a, a drug that, that are, they're looking at using cannabis that's going to treat Tourette's syndrome, which is a, a very, very difficult syndrome to deal with. So you have a lot of these companies that are startups and moving very quickly to try and solve some very big uh, challenges. So I think that's why you've seen a lot of, you know, progressiveness from a country like Israel and you'll continue to see it specifically around the medicinal side and the pharma side. And, and hopefully we won't need it uh, in the other areas uh, in the context of, um, you know, veterans, et cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, it's kind of a Silicon Valley, you know, of the Middle East kind of developing there. Right. I mean, obviously pretty friendly, you know, Israel has been very inviting to a lot of the bigger tech companies. So, and, you know, they've really cultivated a, a great environment for that to develop. Absolutely. So last question before we wrap it up. So I don't know if you can talk about this, but in terms of R and D on the, you know, other super fruits, uh, other plants, you know, Grapes, right? Obviously, red grapes, olives, pomegranates, THC, or cannabis. Is there any other in the future you guys are potentially looking at? I don't know if you can talk about that or not. But so um, I can talk about it, but I don't think I can get as specific as you want me to. Okay. Okay. What I will say is, any any good company, any world class company, 
um, that's you know driven by science and driven by curiosity and specifically driven by driving human utility value, i.e. making a difference to um, human beings living in the world, are always looking at what's next. Um, you know, we have in our pipeline on our superfruits and nutraceuticals, vinea plus an olive-based product and a pomegranate product, product <laughs> that we will roll out in the next, uh, over the next uh, 36 months consecutively. Okay. All right. Obviously, we're working hard on cannabis to bring that to market. No timeline uh, on that at all, or shortly. And um, I, I can't say more. Than no worries. That. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't want Justin getting mad at me. Okay. Too, yeah. No problem. <laughs> uh, I didn't say anything wrong. No um, you did. There can be a broad definition of that or a narrow definition. It's quite yeah. subjective. Um, and then, obviously, like as I said, any good company is working on the pipeline, and we are working on what's next. And so we have a team. And in fact, um, the team, it's a very talented team and it's something that our chairman, uh, Zaki Rakib, is actually leading this team, just given his passion for science and passion for making a difference to the world. And this team is basically working on a, through a, a stages and gates process of probably right now four or five other opportunities that we can apply our technology to. And for me, the barometer, the barometer to, to, to basically say, which one will we choose? Um, because from an R&D perspective, we will at some stage be ready to shift resources to, what, to, to what's next. The barometer is all about looking at uh, human utility value and the ability to make a difference in the world, um, whether it's on a medicinal side, whether it's on changing how we eat. There are many different uh, interesting areas that we're looking at. I can't be more specific. But they're all game changers. Yeah, that's what they're all I game say. changers, and there's so many applications in, in my eyes, what I can see. So I mean, it's yeah, this is this is an amazing. I can see why you were so interested when you first started researching them, and then now became the CEO. And, and absolutely, I can see why. 100%. Yeah, I'm very privileged. I feel very privileged to sit in the seat. Yeah, you're you're in a yeah you're in a very unique situation, and, and you don't have to name any, but are there any competitors at all? Even close. You know, like. Um, um, so in, in this, in the, um, in the broad area, if I look at our definition of a plant cell growth company that has the capabilities that we have, um, right now on the, on the radar, um, I haven't seen anybody yet, you know, that has the capabilities that we have. Yeah. Um, you, as we go in like Vinia, we compete with, you know, there are, in the case of Vinia, you're competing in the heart health supplements area. And there are you know, other heart health supplements. There are other you know, types of resveratrol. What's beautiful is we produce Parsi resveratrol, which is the, the king of resveratrol. And if you look at any other resveratrol um, package out there, it'll always say it's from polygenum, which is from a Japanese weed. Mm. And then they'll say it's got grape extract in, which has you know, basically inferior trans resveratrol. Uh, but we're parseed and the difference between parseed and the other two are solubility, right? Okay. The bioavailability. We're six times more bioavailable. Um, uh, and um, we also have a, a, a much longer lasting effect. We have two peaks, one at one hour and one at five hours. So as a result, we, we have a superior proposition. So you do have competition when you go to market with other competing products, but I'm very happy to say we really feel that we have the edge because we have a superior product proposition and promise yeah. to the consumer. Yeah. As, as it relates to a plant cell growth company that has a technology like biofarming, no. And I will tell you now, we have patents like crazy. <laughs> but as I say, it's quite interesting. I say this to a lot of the investors, but all the investors that come and go, we, do you have patents? You say, yes, we have process patents and we, we, we have amazing patents and they've registered across multiple uh, geographical jurisdictions. But what we have, which is even more important, is know-how, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, sometimes you don't want to put too much in a patent because you don't want people- oh, to look at Coca-Cola, right? They don't, they don't even do it, right? They don't even put their, they don't even patent it, right? The secret right. sauce. So the right? know-how know that we have, it's yeah. ridiculous, yeah. crazy. And because we have such a huge um, experience curve and all of our scientists, we're very lucky. They, they've all been with us for a long period of time. They're all vested in the company um, and are, are part of the family that's really, you know, 
making this change in the world. So, um, so that's a long answer to your question, but hopefully it answers your question. The answer, no, it absolutely answers it. So pretty much no competition. Let's be like in terms of the production of it, the whole, the, the backside of technology is very unique. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's that's very, what I very, unique. Know. we got it very, very carefully. Yeah, absolutely. Alrighty. Well, Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate you for joining me. Um, yeah, so this, hey guys, so you guys can invest in bioharvest sciences. Um, I believe it's an OTC, right? Right, at, at currently? No, it's not well. We're on the CSE. Yes, the CSE. As well. And it's okay. BHSC. It's, yeah. BHSC is our ticker. Okay, awesome. BHSC. Bioharvest sciences. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this is episode 22 of the Frame of Flower podcast. This is with uh, Elon Sobel, the CEO of BioHarvest Sciences. And really appreciate you for joining me and you take, giving some of your time to me. No problems. I really enjoyed the chat and look forward to doing it, to doing it again down the path. Absolutely. Absolutely.